In this video, we're going to look at impulse and momentum in one dimension. We've been told that the connection between forces and momentum is that the forces over time change the momentum of objects. The mathematical representation of exactly how that happens is given by this expression. The time integral of the force over time is equal to the change in momentum. This time integral has its own name. It's called the impulse. It's sometimes given with a capital I or a capital J. Really, we don't use the impulse symbol very much. Often, just the integral is equal to the change in momentum, but sometimes for a shorthand, it's easier to just write I or J. Both the impulse and the momentum and change in momentum are vectors. How this comes about is really pretty simple. I don't do a lot of derivations, but we can look at this one quickly. In one dimension, we know the force is the derivative of the momentum. If that's a ratio of differentials, I can do separation of variables and bring the dt on the other side. Now I just want to integrate both sides. The time integral goes from some time initial to final time. The momentum integral goes from initial momentum to a final momentum. This is essentially the integral of the number 1. The indefinite integral of that is just p evaluated between p final p initial is just the difference, which is delta p. And that's it. If we know the func force is a function of time, we can integrate it and find the change in momentum. Let's look at a special case first. In the event you have a constant force, and we've often run up against constant forces, this has a particularly simple form. Here is my integral, where now the f is constant. I pull that out of the integral, and now I'm integrating that number 1 again. The indefinite integral of that is just t evaluated between t final and t initial, which is the time difference f delta t. For a constant force, I have a very simple form, which is the force times the time interval is equal to the change in momentum. Let's look at one other idea. You might remember from calculus, or if not, you could look it up in your calculus textbook. If I have any function f of t, I can find its time average by 1 over the time interval delta t times the integral of that function over that time interval. Well, that integral is recognizable. So if I want to find the time average of the force, I can evaluate this integral. But of course, this integral is the impulse. So if I substitute in delta p, I just have the change in momentum over the change in time. If I rewrite that, I have an expression that looks a lot like what I had before. Delta p is equal to the time average times the time interval. So the time averaged force is the constant force that gives you the same impulse, <laughs> same impulse for that time interval. Let's do a quick example to show you what that means. Here I have a force. It goes from 0 to 10 in 2 seconds and then back to 0 in 4 seconds. If I want to calculate the impulse, that's the integral over that time interval. Well, the integral is just area under the curve, so I can calculate the area of a triangle, which is quite simple. 1 half the base, which is 4, times the height is 10, 20 newton seconds. If I want to calculate the average force, well, that's the impulse divided by the time interval. 20 divided by 4 is 5. If I represent that graphically, it's this constant force over the same time interval, whose area, which is the impulse, is equal to the area of the original function. Constant force times the time interval gives me the same value. Next up, we'll do some examples with impulse and momentum.